As with all of my Saw reviews for the entire franchise, I would say, with this particular review, as I have with all of the ones preceding it, that you should not check out this review unless you have at least seen the previous movies in the franchise. That pretty much goes without saying, but the reason why I need to stress that is, as I've said before, each of these reviews contains spoilers, not for this film, but for the previous movies. So if you haven't seen any of them, be warned, there are visual and discussion point spoilers in each of these reviews. But if you're okay with that, or if you've already caught up with the line of movies to this point, then let's proceed. Now, I've mentioned before in my previous reviews of Saw movies that I personally like the even movies in the series, 2, 4, and 6 in particular, more than the odd movies of 1, 3, and 5. And that stays the same with this movie, number five, as I said. Now, I don't dislike this film. And one of the things in particular that I think the later Saw movies do very well, in particular five and six, is that they look much more into the backstory of Jigsaw himself. Because although, of course, he's dead, he has been since the third movie, you don't really know why he does what he does. You know he's a cancer patient, you get some inklings of maybe some past experiences, but it's not really until the later films, basically from 4 onward, that you really start to get more of an insight into his backstory. And with 5 and 6 in particular, you get a lot more of that, especially in 6, but we'll discuss that more when we get to that review. Now, in this particular movie, you also get more of an insight into the backstory of our new villain. And this is one of the things that would be spoiled for a previous film if you haven't seen up to Saw 4. Because, of course, in that movie, we get the twist that Hoffman is the new Saw, in effect. And this movie looks very much so into his beginnings and why he's doing what he's doing, becoming, in effect, Saw 2.0. Now, he is not as intimidating as Jigsaw is. He's not as pure in motive as Jigsaw is. He's not as focused in his goal, but he serves the purpose. Jigsaw is dead, and so you have to have somebody else to continue the line. Amanda, of course, is also dead, so you need to improve the situation in some way and provide some new character who can keep the story flow going. Now, speaking of keeping the flow going, this movie also continued the trend, the unfortunate one, I would say, of declining the franchise. Not in terms of how good the film actually is, at least in my opinion, but in terms of both box office and certainly critical response. Because on the net, reviews on sites such as Rotten Tomatoes get extremely low for these later films. It's hovering around 12% at the moment, and that's really inaccurate, I would say. A 12% movie means that you literally could not get much worse. Really? Do you really think you couldn't get much worse than the Saw films? Because that's a strong statement to make. I have seen plenty of movies which are far worse than the Saw films. I've even seen movies which are acclaimed, which I would say don't hold a candle to the Saw franchise. Even my least favourite Saw movie would be better, I would say, than something like Open Water, which I consider to be one of the most useless films ever made, despite the fact that it's pretty well received. By most people, at least. Now, this movie, as I said, does have lower critical acclaim, with very low scores, generally speaking, although there are certainly fans of the series, even in the later films myself included. And also monetarily, as I alluded to earlier, you see a drop again. Because once again, the budget of this movie takes a little bit of a jump from those before it, just around 800 grand more, so just under 11 million dollars, which still isn't a huge amount for a big Hollywood movie, certainly not a movie that makes as much money as these do. And speaking of how much money they make, this particular movie, Saw 5, made just under $114 million at the box office. Now, that's not bad at all for an $11 million film. That's really good, in fact. And under any other circumstances, people would be really happy with that. The only reason why it's not considered to be quite as good is because the previous movies in the series made even more. And this did have a notable drop from the earnings of the previous film. 
The previous movie had a drop from the one before it, but this one dropped much more heavily, around 20 or 30 million dollars less, which was a much more significant drop to what number four did compared to number three. Now, I would say that five and six are probably among my lesser favourites. I don't hate either of them, I don't dislike either of them, I just find them to be not necessarily boring, but a little slower than the earlier films. They tend to focus more on big traps, big setups, and a lot of gore. I would say that this movie in particular has by far the goriest opening trap of the series to this point. And although it's great to watch, of course, it's part of the Saw experience and it is fun to see gore, it just doesn't feel as needed in the plot. Some of the traps in this film are specifically pointless, because there are certain characters who, like with Amanda, are killed, or at least attempted to be killed, in ways that aren't necessary. At the end of the day, if you're going to kill someone, you don't need a trap to do that. You could just shoot them in the head. So sometimes you think, well, clearly that trap was designed to kill someone. So why go through the trouble of making the trap if you're just going to kill them anyway? You may as well just kill them. Now, in the movie, with Saw Logic, it's obvious why they did that. It's about the spectacle. You want to see all of these different traps but it just falls a little bit short from a logical point of view. But that being said, there are plenty of movies, most movies in fact, which will start to fall apart once you apply real-world logic to them. So of course you have to have some level of suspension of disbelief, but I would say you need a little more of that in these later films. I still enjoy them, but definitely not as much as the earlier ones. For me it peaks at 2, 3 and 4, then 5 and 6, not as much. However, I would still say that I enjoy both 5 and 6 more than the original Saw, which is kind of ironic given that most people tend to like the first film the most, whereas I like it basically the least out of the whole series in terms of rewatchability. In terms of how well it's made, it's still a great achievement. I just don't enjoy it as much and I don't feel the need to go back to the film, whereas with the later ones, I can go back to them and enjoy them. Now, as far as the plot, the story of the film, you don't really need to go into it any more than I already have. As I mentioned, you get more backstory for Tobin Bell's Jigsaw, which is great. That's one of the best aspects of 5 and 6. But also, as I mentioned, you get more, not necessarily just backstory, but more information about Hoffman. The way he operates, the way he thinks, the kind of traps that he sets up. And that's cool to see. I just personally find that Hoffman isn't as cool a villain. He's certainly a villain, but he, he's just not really that intimidating compared to Jigsaw. Jigsaw seems like a much, much cleverer guy in comparison. Whereas all of his followers, such as Amanda and also Hoffman, they seem a little bit too vindictive. And part of the point of the story is that they let that control them too much, whereas Jigsaw has a much more clinical approach where he takes his personal feelings out of it wherever possible, and that makes him more effective. It makes him almost more robotic in the scenario, and that makes him more dangerous. However, Hoffman is a decent villain. He's not a great one, which I would say Jigsaw is, but he's a decent one. He's certainly serviceable enough to keep the series going, and to keep it, at least to some degree, interesting. And with that being said, what about the individual points of review? Well, first of all, we have that story and plot, and I've touched on it a little bit, but overall, I would give the story and plot of Saw 5 a 6. And for points of reference, that's the same score that I gave to Saw 3 and Saw 1. It's not a bad story, you do get important information in there, but I didn't find it as complex in a good way or quite as enjoyable as, for instance, Saw 4 or Saw 2, which definitely had, at least for me, superior plot lines and stories and the way they carried out those stories. As far as the characters and their motivations, again, I'm actually going to give it another 6, and this is the first time that we've given it a 6 since the original Saw, which I also gave a 6 in that regard, and the reason why is because, as I said, the main villain isn't quite as good as Jigsaw, and the scenes with Jigsaw are definitely the best in the film. So the rest of the time, you're kind of hoping for more of those, and Hoffman is basically just a placeholder in a movie where he should be far more than that. Again, it's not a bad film, and I don't dislike it for what it does. It's just kind of a 
empty shoes that he can't really fill kind of scenario. But at least that's how I felt about it. As far as the visuals, the special effects, the makeup, etc, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. And some of the later films do have sometimes an advantage in that regard. 4, 5 and 6 in particular do showcase some fantastic special effects because the films tend to get more about bigger, more complex, sometimes less believable, but still hugely fun trap setups with great gore, great makeup in general, all that kind of thing. And overall, that's why I'm giving this film a 9. It showcases them very well. The opening trap, as I said, is easily the goriest to this point in the series, and it sets the tone for the later films very well. As far as the audio, the soundtrack, the music, etc, I've already mentioned in the previous ones that I'm giving everything from 2 onward a 6 out of 10. And it's not because it's particularly good or bad compared to the others, it's just because they all have a very similar audio tone, similar sound effects, similar ambience, and obviously the same iconic music, and so it just wouldn't really be fair or logical to rate it higher or lower than the previous ones, because they all just keep that same level. Which is good, it keeps it consistent but it's a consistent 6 out of 10 for me. And finally, for the rewatchability and entertainment factor, which is, of course, the most subjective to me personally, I'm going to give Saw 5 a 6 out of 10, which is actually, again, the same score that I gave to Saw 3 and Saw 1. I don't dislike the film. I would watch it again, especially if it was watching it with someone else who hadn't seen it so that I could watch it with them and see their experience. That would be fun, but were I on my own, there is a far lower chance that I would re-watch it. I'm glad I've seen it, I enjoyed what they did with it, it's all part of the bigger whole and it's definitely essential moving on through the series, but it's just not quite as rewatchable for me personally as some of the other movies. And so, overall, that means that as a combined score from all five categories put together, I'm giving Saw 5 a pretty decent, not overly high, but definitely not low, 3.3 out of 5. And to give that some context, that's higher than the original, and a tiny bit higher, 0.1 higher in fact, than I gave Saw 3. So overall, that gives you some idea of what to expect if you've seen those previous films, and overall, as with all of the other movies, I would recommend checking them all out, because although they are individual films and they definitely do change in terms of how good they are, they are in effect, at least in my opinion, episodes of one long story, and I love them for that. But overall, that's it for this particular review, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.